Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this Office of Make a Startup. And uh, in a couple of minutes, we're going to start the show. Uh, and when I announced that we're here today at the Office of uh, Make a Startup of the uh, Mass Angel Fund, I expect you to uh, be very happy and applaud and cheer because people are now watching live, so it's very important that you do this very spontaneously. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. I'm sitting already here on my, on my chair so I can say hi in this, in, in this way. I'm um, looking at my director and when he says ready, then we are ready to go with this uh, 39th Friday 6th. Yeah. Hello everybody, welcome to the Friday at 6 show, the talk show about startups in Berlin. Today from the office of Make a Startup. <laughs> Very good, and tonight we are having eight super cool guests. And we're going to start with the first two of them. On my left here is Philip Hartmann of Rheingau Founders. And next to him, a newbie in the Berliner startup scene, but soon he's going to be very famous. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Spreaker, Francesco Bacheri. <laughs> Already getting a lot of applause, Francesco. That's very good, right, for be just being here for one month. Because let me start with you. Um, you came one month ago from Silicon Valley, moved the whole engineering team to this office as well. Uh, but, I mean, why from Silicon Valley to Berlin? Is this the other way around? Shouldn't you go from Berlin to Silicon Valley? Well, to be honest, I was in Silicon Valley, but the engineering team was back in Italy. So what we did is we wanted to be all in the same place, and we decided that Berlin is a place where which makes sense. Yes, but why not move the engineers then to Silicon Valley? Um, well, because first of all, there's some kind of problems with visa issues, and it's not that easy to go to San Francisco and actually stay there. Well, since we're in Europe, we can basically move and relocate here. So I think that the next, that the next big thing after San Francisco probably, or at least in Europe, is definitely Berlin for what's happened here. Okay, do the people that are listening now agree with that, that Berlin is after San Francisco the best place to be? Can I hear some reactions about that? Is that true or is that not true? Yeah! <laughs> okay, that was very enthusiastic. Uh, <laughs> next to you, yeah. <laughs> next to uh, Francesco is Philip Hartmann. Philip, you've been here in this uh, Berlin startup scene for quite some time. How long now already? I think it's coming up to the 10th year now, so I started in 2003 as an intern for Oliver Zamba. Okay, since 2003 already, what has changed in the last 10 years? Well, I think um, a heck of a lot, actually. Um, you know, of course, there's uh, much more funding available now in the scene. Um, there is so many international people, like truly international. Just look at our startups. We have like CTOs coming from Turkey. We have people, you know, coming all over the place, basically, from... Mm -hmm. Ukraine, like really everywhere basically. And um, this is something that significantly changed over the time and yeah, we're just happy to be part of it. Yeah, so that was the marketing part of this whole Friday at 6 show. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about real stuff because this you have already he heard like 200,000 times over the past years. So tell me something about Rheingau Founders. What kind of investor is it? Well, we're not a typical investor. Um, we're um, kind of an incubator slash company builder. Um, and uh, our approach is uh, probably one of the most founder-friendly approaches because... They all uh, say that, right? Well, of course. Uh, but as you said, you know, this is the marketing part of tonight. And I will be... No, no, no. The marketing that. part already ended. Now oh, we're it's going over. for the okay. real interviews. No, yes. but no, without the bullshit. Um, you know, we, um, we basically only invest in the very early stages of any startup. Um, so we're not investing. Um, we are incubating. So we always need to have that particular team set up. We need to look into markets that are truly VC capable. We see a lot of stuff out there right now that is just completely a bubble, right, that is, that is building up because it will never attract any follow-on financing. And this is where we guys come into play. We basically, even before we start a company, we start talking to these VCs, try to, you know, get them involved into our system and try to get their feedback, try to be really open with them. And um, so far it's been really great because um, some, some ideas we, we just skipped. We never went into them because we 
saw that we would never find any financing for it, right? Could that be even a USP for <laughs> what you do? That, hey, when you come to us, maybe you never make it to the, to the, to the VCs? Well, no, because that's you're exactly so critical and so you know, okay. really looking into what people are planning to do before throwing in a lot of money. We're absolutely hypercritical, definitely. You know, look at our deal flow. We only do three deals a year, maybe even four, right? And if we don't see anything, then we don't do anything. So we're not in that fund structure where we need to invest each year a certain amount of money, but we're completely flexible at that, right? Yeah, Francesco, uh, can you tell us what Spreaker is? Because uh, at this moment, we are actually using Spreaker to live stream. Only the audio, so we're live streaming on Friday at six.com slash live, but also separately the audio on Spreaker. But could you tell us a little bit more about what it exactly is? Yeah, so I think you said it perfectly. Yeah, actually, if you want, you can take my place, but <laughs> I think Spreaker is basically what we call a social radio platform. So it allows you to broadcast live your thoughts, your music, your uh, interviews, and even your talk shows but just by using your phone or your computer without installing anything. Yeah, there is kind of like like a company in Berlin, I uh, cannot remember the main, uh, name. It's a small Start, one, yeah. It sto starts with an S and it ends on, on OutCloud. So um, it's kind of big, you know, it has more than 60 million in funding. Uh, actually, uh, Alex Leung, the CEO, uh, is, well, shall I reveal that? Yeah, he's actually living in this building, in the building where we are now at Make Startup uh, Angel Fund. So. Um, I mean, he's looking over our shoulders, so to say. So how can you, you know, do you really compete with them or, or is that always the stupid journalist question, you know, that don't really understand the product and then says, okay, but isn't SoundCloud already there? Well, we will be flattered by uh, complete competing with SoundCloud given the amount of traction that they have gotten so far. But I think that by, for now we're in a slightly different space. We definitely target um, people who want to create live stuff. So for instance, what we're doing right now live, um, uh, something w which is not possible to do on SoundCloud, yeah. but basically whatever we do on Spreaker then stays there, recorded as a podcast, you can upload your stuff, so. And I why do you at Spreaker add the live streaming factor? Because what, what, what is the business model thought behind that to add that? Because there's an, a lot of people who actually need it. Think, uh, of, for instance, you're, you go to a sports event and you want to do the play-by-play -play of the sports event, you're not going to do that on SoundCloud or on YouTube. You need the ability to broadcast live, and it's more social. But, of course, uh, beyond that, there's the ability to keep everything recorded as they do. So, yeah, to answer your question, to come to your point, of course, I, I think yeah. we're in some kind of collision route. Yeah. But you've been around for quite some years, right? Yeah. And also years where live streaming is not a totally unknown factor. Mm -hmm. So why haven't you grown harder over the past few years? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, everyone has it, its own story. Um, I think we've, we've grown pretty well known in some parts of the world. Because how many active users? Uh, active on a monthly basis, I think 1.5 million. Okay, and how okay. many minutes do they live stream? Uh, b minutes? In total, yeah. yeah. They stream like 500,000 hours, which times 60, I think yeah. the calculation per month? should be like Per month, that is? Per month, yeah. So no, it's not per user, not even one hour per month? No, sorry. Uh, this was the listening part, okay? Per user. So per user, not even an hour per part listening. Okay. That's true, of mm. course. And of course, there are people creating content, and they create roughly 65,000 hours of content per month. So okay. they're very active creating. Yeah, they're very active? Yeah, they they are actually they are. It's fun. Yeah, I mean you, you, the, the barriers to entry are actually very low. You mm -hmm. just push a button, and you click a couple of controls, and you're live, and you can have your friends write back to you on Twitter, on Facebook, and say, hey, what you're doing is really cool. Why don't you say hi to me and not to all the people who are listening? Philip, uh, you have like a, I think, a very, very interesting website with the Ryan Gao founders because when you go on the, on the website, I think it's Ryan Gao uh, Minus uh, in German, you say uh, uh, founders.com, right? Or what's the exact name of the address so people yeah. can look it up now? Yeah, Ryan Gao minus yeah. founders.com. Okay, and then you go to this website and you see uh, Die Guten, so uh, the good guys in, in, in German. So why do you position yourself like that? Well, I think it's, um, first of all, our legal framework, our contracts. Uh, once we start with the founders, we can't just, you know, simply kick them out of uh, any ecosystem, right? And uh, this is one of the main reasons why we're so codependent upon them. So some of the founders that we see, we actually, we, we, we get to know each other years, maybe even before starting our corporation and starting incorporating the company. Yeah. And, and, and all the others are doing it that bad? 
No, they're definitely not. And uh, there's just different approaches to the to the system. You know, you just like you have so many you know typical VCs out there that look into uh, any particular point. You know, some of them might invest 50k, yeah. 100k. Yeah. Some of them 5 million, 50 million, right? Yeah. And it's just a different approach. Okay, so you're super critical, and you say, okay, when we have a deal with companies, then you know they pass this test that is almost impossible to uh, to to go through. So, how many companies do you have in portfolio now? Yeah, for the Ranga founders part, we have uh, six companies right now. Um, and and uh, uh, w let let let's take one of them. How, how long does it exist? How does it perform? Well, the youngest company I'm supporting tonight, uh, which is Datapan, mm -hmm. and uh, we just founded it a couple of months ago, and uh, we're going into a beta now in the next month. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, we started, you know, for instance, uh, learning these guys um, a bit better, you know, learning, getting to know them a little bit better, um, I think maybe a year ago or so. So, uh, and we didn't found after a half a year of really critical evaluation of the business model. Mm. Yeah. So what do they do and why are they going to make, uh, let's say, 50 million in three years? Yeah, that's absolutely the target. Um, what they're doing is uh, business uh, intelligence. So it's a typical software as a service tool that can used uh, that can be used by any um, company out there that does revenues online. So it's really universal. Uh, what we take is basically the typical database structure, and uh, we allow the user in a typical software as a service format uh, to drag and drop their existing database structure and to come up with reports, um, SQL basis, mm -hmm. on a really, really simple approach. And then they can combine these uh, um, reports to dashboards, you know, use it for marketing purposes, for instance, also for investors. So it's a really easy to use uh, business intelligence tool. Yeah, and we always like to hear some news also in Friday at 6. So, I mean, uh, going in, in, in beta uh, in uh, April, so almost going to launch publicly. Even so March. So even oh, March, even right? March. Even yeah. So how, how close are you to, to getting fundies, f funding for these guys? Well, we actually already got some funding for that company. So and who, uh, who are, are they funded by? Well, we can't announce that yet. I'm ah, so sorry. But okay. uh, it's a couple of, um, well, one of them, you know, of course, is, uh, is quite clear because they announced it themselves as, uh, for instance, German startup group. Um, they invested now into three out of our four right. uh, active portfolio companies. Yep. Uh, with Alexander Kulpin of eh? Berlin Partners. Exactly, one of Christoph their, uh, Gellinger. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, um, Francesco, when you hear this, okay, funding all these young companies, when, you know, walking... Uh, in this area, Berlin, Kreuzberg, no Köln, so to say, with the Umspannwerk here, a lot of co-working spaces. What's the impression you have after after one month? Do you really feel that is that it's alive? It is. It's definitely alive. Something's happening here. Uh, as a comparison, with my experience with what's happening in in the valley, what's missing in the Berlin startup scene is like the big companies, like the the big companies which basically didn't exist ten years ago, the Facebooks, the Googles, or those guys that are throwing a lot of money and a lot of hype in the valley. And unfortunately here, they they, they still don't exist. And yeah. that, that's one of the reasons that... Throwing a lot of hype in. Uh, why is that important? Well, it's important because it makes everyone happy at the end of the day. But these guys are actually throwing also a lot of money in startup and development and right. making everyone excited. Mm. So uh, even the VCs, if they're excited, they're more willing to invest and take a risk. And while here they do not see... It's proof of this incredible success that can be built in five years. So. Yeah. yeah, you were all also in the neighborhood of when these guys of Twitter and Google were still there in Menlo Park, I believe in San Francisco, when they, you know, when they started, Mark Zuckerberg, you were around these guys, you've seen them grow? Or? No, I wasn't. I went to San Francisco first time in 2010, but I, I was working literally side by side with the founders of Instagram. Um, Kevin Systrom was uh, a peer 38 when we started in, back in 2010. Yeah, so what happened to them is incredible, of course. Yes. It's, it's everybody's it's dream, but also the big exception. Yeah, but I mean, it, it makes you very happy, of course, and it makes you feel that if they yeah. did it, you can yeah. do it. It just Maybe uh, if you washed his car once, you would have had enough funding for, for the rest of your life. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're, they're very Wash happy. your cars, guys. When you're working with somebody in the co-working space and you think, okay, he's going to make it, be nice to him. I mean, maybe he's Kevin Sistrom after all. So You never um, know. Right. Philip, you said on the website as well, um, entrepreneurship is like kite surfing. Uh, so where is this metaphor coming from? Yeah, well, it's an um, allegory that I could go on and on with, you know, but uh, we basically are, you know, passionate kite surfers ourselves. And 
much of it is basically like entrepreneurship. So you're you're at the beach. You need to be set. You need you need to set up your gear right. Yeah. Uh, it's a very dangerous sport, right? So uh, you need to take uh, extra precaution. Uh, you need to analyze the wind first, right? So about market tendencies, all of that, and then you have the waves out there. You know, the open shore, yeah. something can go Berlin terribly wrong. Berlin is the perfect spot for kite surfing, also, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to perfect. pick your location well before you start. Yeah, so. Well, un unfortunately, you know, we had to start here because our network was just oh, so good. Okay, but, exactly. uh, you know, every now and then we tend to go to the Baltic or to right. the Northern Sea. But, yeah, then, you know, when you're when you're up there, you mm. basically get that lift from the wind, which yeah. is, uh, you know, in our case, definitely the yeah. capital and all the network. And then you basically have a lot of fun along the yeah. road, right? One last thing, uh, because Medvertise, you also have a, re a relationship re with, right, as a Rheingau founder, so to say. I hear a lot of uh, bad things about Medvertise. You know, there are people going in and out all the time, um, but they're in this mobile advertisement space where everybody says, of, okay, this is going to be the big hit. Is, it, was Medvertise not just too early to market to really uh, become a success? Isn't it already over? Well, um, from, from my end, you know, I, I co-founded it together with the guys from, from uh, Team Europe. So um, I was the first managing director and was there in the fir first year, basically. And back then, definitely, we were a bit too early. Yeah? We, we saw a lot of um, these companies like AdMob really picking up traction. And then we thought it would be best to kind of copy that business model and bring it to the European market. No, of you course. copied that business model. I'm such and a bad boy. you say this out loud in the show? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's normal. Okay, yeah. No, and, um, you know, and of course, you know, uh, we, we needed to, to pivot that business model um, to a certain extent, which was also one of the reasons why I left that company, actually. But, you know, I'm still in close contact with most of these people. And, but uh, are they going to make it, is it, to put it in short, my question? Uh, well, you never can say that. Um, I think they, they have taken the right measures right now, um, and uh, I believe there's still mean, a lot uh, of potential in there. You mean putting the CEO to the, to, to the, to the outside the company? Well, there's another CEO, Christoph Wittig, who's really um, a seasoned entrepreneur and okay. a skilled guy who can really take it to the next level. Mm. However, I personally already sold my shares in that company. Okay. So, Francesco, um, thank you so much for also letting you into your space here because you're part of the Make It uh, Startup uh, uh, office. Um, actually, we came here this morning and uh, the whole team of Francesco said, okay, we are going to work downstairs so that you can build up your studio. And this is amazing to come to an office and if people want to cooperate like that, it's really super cool. So thank you, Francesco, for you're that, that you're so flexible and so willing to make <laughs> something out of Berlin. <laughs> Okay, thank you again for this interview. Uh, uh, we'll meet you afterwards, of, of course, uh, uh, during this broadcast, because we are here at an event with more than 200 people watching also and enjoying some live music. <laughs>